So I have this uh, polynomial ring in n plus one there n plus one variables. And so this is uh, somehow or other related to projective space. So, um, you know, projective space and these n, n plus one variables are sort of related to each other in all kinds of ways. So at the moment I'm just doing a little piece of algebra which is asking, which is going to ask uh, for A or for uh, uh, quotients of A. corresponding to uh, x in Pn. So uh, <coughs> how much how much of A is there? Right. Uh, how big is A? What's uh, uh, you know what's the size of A? So how much of A is there? Right, and I came and I uh, explained last time that uh, uh, I, A is graded, which means that A is direct sum A homogeneous of degree D, and here D is greater than or equal to zero. So graded ring, and uh, each A D is finite finite dimensional. Uh, vector space over k over the original field, right? And it has dimension uh, is d plus n choose n, d, same as d plus n choose d. And so this is, I should say, uh, you know, if d is greater than zero, and it's uh, zero if d is less than zero. Right. So uh, this works if d is one. Uh, so, sorry, if d is if d is zero, then I'm getting n choose n, given given n elements. How can, how you can make a choice of n? So there's a unique way then, and that the unique way is the identity element of the field. So the, the, in degree one, I have the constants, which is a one-dimensional vector space. In degree one, if d is one, this is n plus one choose n, and that's, of course, n plus one, and that's the number of these generators. Right? Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, this number, for example, n plus two choose two, you can take, uh, you can take the number of monomials here as being the definition of the binomial coefficient if you want to. It's a good definition for the binomial coefficients. Okay, so uh, we, uh, last time uh, we, I, I, uh, we saw this idea of taking sum over all d of this number here, p d, times t to the d. Right? And so this is uh, sum of d greater than or equal to 0, uh, d plus n choose n, <coughs> t to the, t to the um, d. And uh, we saw last time that this is uh, 1 over 1 minus t to the n plus 1. Right, so uh, you know if you've you've everybody has calculated one minus one over one minus t. This is the Aris, the geometric progression, and one over one minus t squared is one plus two t plus three t squared plus and so on. And so I mean these are these are familiar. You may have done these at school. You certainly did this one at school. Uh, <coughs> Uh, so these are sort of particularly nice numbers. So I want to uh, uh, I want to do the same for any 
finitely, de finitely generated uh, A module, a graded A module M. Right? And this, by, by the same, I mean there's a proposition saying that P M of T is a numerator divided by 1 minus T to the N plus 1, where the numerator is a Laurent polynomial, a, a, a Laurent polynomial in T. So, so Laurent means it's, uh, it, it's, I'm allowed to have T to the minus 3, for example, plus T to the 7 or something. <coughs> I'm allowed to have some little coefficients here times different monomials, but the monomials are allowed to be in monomials also in t to the minus 1. Right? So, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the ring these belong to is z of t, t to the minus 1. <coughs> okay? So, uh, you know, the, this is a very, very standard argument, and the proof is not at all difficult. But let me give, a, let me first of all give an example of why this is a good thing to do. So first example, so let me take a hypersurface. Let, 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 let me say x is xd in weight projective space n dimensions. Suppose this is given by f equals 0, f, uh, f uh, hypersurface, uh, f uh, po uh, form of degree d. Okay, so I, you know, this might be a plane curve, for example. So here's the, project, here's the projective space, and here's the, uh, here's the x. And so this is given by one equation. This is given by one equation, and so, you know, uh, I, don't yet, I don't yet have a proper notion of, def of dimension, but given by one equation in n space, you should expect this to be n minus 1 dimensional. And, uh, you know, this other question about, you know, how much of the ring is there? How big is this ring? Well, you'd expect this degree to also to be visible from there. You'd also expect, you know, the bigger degree D should somehow or other be uh, uh, a measure of the size of X, how, how, how big X is, how complicated X is. So, uh, together with this, I can write down a K homogeneous of x right so this is the ring I defined last time and so this is a polynomial ring k x naught up to xn that's the same as before and then divided out by uh, fd so this is the principal ideal generated by f, and it's also, uh, it's also equal to i of x, the homogeneous ideal of all forms vanishing on x. Right? So I'm taking, I'm taking the original f here to be irre an irreducible polynomial. <coughs> and so when I ask for, uh, this is part of Null-Stellensatz, uh, the polynomial x defines a subvariety. If I ask for all the polynomials that vanish on X, I get, well, I get the radical of this ideal. So I get the set of polynomials, some power of which is a multiple of F. But the F was irreducible, so the ideal, the ideal generated by F is a prime ideal. And so this is just, uh, I'm just taking polynomial ring, and then I'm dividing out by this ideal here, which is a principal ideal. So how much of this is there? I'm asking the question, how big is this ring? And the answer is given by the Hilbert series. So P x of t is equal to 1 minus t to the power of d divided by 1 minus t to the power of n plus 1. <coughs> and I can rewrite this if I want to as 1 plus t plus t squared plus, plus t to the power of d minus 1 divided by 1 minus t to the n.
Okay, I'm, I'll prove this. I'll, 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 uh, this is a, a calculation, a, ca uh, a, calc a little calculation, and I give a, I give a proof of this. But first, let, let me let me give the words. Let me say what I mean by how big, how big the ring is. So when I see this, I say the dimension of x is n minus one. And I say the degree of x is d, uh, is d. And that's the sum of the numerator. The sum of the coefficients of the numerator. Right? So this numerator is 1, 1, 1. There are d, there are d terms here. Right, so the numerator is a polynomial in T. In this case, it's a polynomial in... So this is the numerator as a polynomial evaluated at T equals 1. Right, if, I set, if, I set, if I set T equals 1 in here, I'm, uh, I get something which is not very happy. I get 0 divided by 0. If I set T equals 1 here, I get, uh, <coughs> I get D, D terms there. And the, the, the numerator is just saying how big the ring is growing. So uh, let me say the corollary of this. So in particular, in particular, if I ask for this k homogeneous x, in degree, I don't want to use the same letter d, in some degree, um, uh, what's, an, what's a good letter? In, in degree, uh, let me say in degree k. Uh, okay, that's also not very good. In degree E. Right? Has dimension. Has dimension. Well, let me take... When, let, let me... Let me let, let, let first, let, let me first of all say for E greater than zero. So what's the dimension of this? So I say it's, uh, um, oh good, um, it's n n plus e choose n n plus e choose n plus n plus e minus one choose n plus and so on n plus e minus d plus 1, she said. Right? And, uh, so I'll explain how you do this calculation later. But anyway, uh, this is roughly, this is roughly the leading, the leading term here, the term of highest degree in this. This is d times d times e to the n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so I should have said that, I should have said that here, I should have said that here, this number here, this number here is d to the power of n divided by n factorial, right, plus lower order terms. Right, if you think about this, uh, uh, so, so think about this d plus n choose n. So you know a formula for it, it's d plus n plus times d plus n minus 1 plus d plus n and so on, all the way to down to d plus 1, uh, and then divided by the, the denominator here, which is n factorial. So if I take the sum of those terms, then, you know, whether it's d or d plus 1 or d minus 1, it doesn't really matter. When d is very, very big, uh, the thing that happens here, the, uh, the important thing is just d to the n, nth powers, because there are n, in the formula for the binomial coefficients, there are d terms. And so this is d raised to the power of n divided by n factorial. So n, n factorial is really the volume of the simplex 
it, 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 this n, n factorial is really not there. It's just some kind of normalizing volume term. It's the volume of the unit, unit simplex. <coughs> okay, and so uh, so you know that I'm I'm, uh, I, I'm this result is a very precise result. It's telling you exactly how much of this, how big this ring is in every degree. Right? But on the other hand, I, 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 you know, together with the precise result here, I also want the coarse result, <coughs> saying that this ring is growing, so that this ring is growing roughly as a polynomial in of degree n minus 1, which is the dimension of x, and the leading term in that growth is d, which is the degree of x. Okay? So, uh, so let's think about how we prove this formula. Uh, so, you know, let, let, me, uh, let, me, let me say, so P t, Px of t, by definition, is, you know, it's this dimension of k homogeneous, let, let me just abbreviate this, k homogeneous of x in degree, uh, let me say, e times t to the e. Right, and then it's summed equals 0 to infinity. Okay, so, uh, you know, we can start by practicing and see what happens when e is, what happens in this formula when e is 1. So I just get uh, e, e is 0. So, you know, the dimension, this is the quotient of the polynomial ring, so I get 1. In degree e equals 1, what do I get? Well, uh, you know, if x fills out the whole of projective space, then there are no linear forms that vanish on x. And so I get n plus 1. Right? Except, except a trivial case, except if e equals 1. In fact, except if d equals 1. Because if d equals 1, if x is of degree 1, then when I take linear forms and ask how many of them are non-zero on x, well, one of them is zero on x, and so I lose one. Right, so if e is 2, I get n plus 2 choose 2, except if d is less than or equal to 2, and then I get less. Right, so now let me ask this in sensible degrees. So if e, if e is general, what am, I, what am I doing? I'm taking, uh, I'm taking k, I'm taking a in degree e, and I'm uh, into, uh, you know, so I'm taking a form in there into the form restricted to x. And this is in a e divided out by the ideal fd. Okay, so I'm asking for the dimension of this. So w uh, the, what dimension is, is count monomials. Right, so th these are just counting monomials. And then modulo those that vanish on x. Yes, and those that vanish on x is multiples of f. Right. So uh, when I when so if, uh, just to just to think about this in 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 terms of what you have to calculate, I'm counting monomials there, and I'm getting some number, and then I'm subtracting off all the multiples of f. So here, for example, I had to subtract, if, if, if x was a, if e was 1, I'd have to subtract off 
one for the hyperplane that vanishes there. Right? So here I have to sub subtract off all the guys that vanish. And so what this is, is I get, uh, I get n plus e choose n right, minus n minus d plus e choose n. Right. So, so this guy. So, so let me let me let me say now this. Uh, so, so, so what I'll say the same thing again. In slightly more algebraic terms. So here's my ring K homogeneous of X, and it's equal to A divided by F D. So in degree E, in degree E, this is A in degree E divided out by FD times A in degree D minus E. Right? Because if something is a if something is of degree E and is a multiple of FD, then it means he's FD multiplying something in degree D minus E. I'm sorry, E minus D. Yes, sorry, you can. So, so in other words, let, 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 let me now say this more algebraically in the way that I want it. I'm going to have, uh, I, I want to have this K homogeneous X in degree E. I want to have the A in degree E here, and I want to have A in degree uh, E minus D there, and I want to have multiplication by D, F, D there, and I want to put a zero there. Okay, so, um, you know, uh, if you haven't seen these, this notation of exact sequences before, it just means that there's a, there's, uh, A, E minus D is contained in A, E, and this, this guy here is the quotient. So this is multiplication by D, and this is the quotient A, E, divided by F, D, times A, D, E minus D. So these are finite dimensional vector spaces. I've got, uh, I've got the, the zero, so, so, so uh, can, can, can I ask, have people seen exact sequences before? Has everybody seen exact sequence? So to say the sequence is exact means that the composite of these two maps is zero. So everything that it starts here and then gets divided out by the image is, goes to zero. And it also means that some, everything that maps to zero comes from an element there. Right? So in any case, uh, this is a finite dimensional vector space. This is a subspace, and this is the image under the, the, it's the quotient by that subspace. Right? And so the dimensions add up. So the dimension, dimension of this guy is equal to the sum. So the dimension of AE is equal to the dimension of A e minus D plus the dimension of this, uh, of this thing we're interested in. So, so this says that, um, uh, this says, do, uh, so when I do the subtraction here, I get, so therefore, the dimension of k hom of x e is equal to uh, d plus e choose, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is, uh, a is still polynomial ring in n plus 1 variables, so this is n plus e choose 
I'm going to write n always to be safe, and then minus n plus e minus d, as we said. Right, and I, of course, think, thinking of, the, of when this n plus e minus d is positive. When if, uh, if, this, if this is negative, then I'm just going to put zero there. Right, so I'm really, th I'm right, I'm really writing this formula down for when e is positive. <coughs> Okay, and now, now, now sum this over uh, all, all E. Right, and uh, so, so what I'm getting is, um, I'm getting 1 over 1 minus T to the N plus 1. Right, that's from all of these terms. And then here, here what am I getting? Well, I'm, I, I'd be getting t to the e minus d times n plus e choose d. And then it's summed, and it's summed over all, all values that count. So this is minus t to the d times 1 over 1 minus t to n plus 1. So, so the effect of doing this is just that all the terms here uh, are, not, are not multiplied by t to the power of e, but they're just multiplied by t to the power of e minus d. Right? Uh, I hope I've got that right. Okay, anyway, this is the, uh, the answer is right. And so that's this uh, proof. This proves uh, star. Okay, so uh, I can take I can take uh, I can take direct sum over all over all uh, over all e here, and then I get this thing, which is a maps to k homogeneous of x. And I've got this map here, which is A maps to A, and this, uh, this is multiplication by D. Right? So, uh, so, so to say that this FD, that say that this map is injective, is just to say that FD is a non-zero divisor here. So, so that's, this zero here is saying that the FD is a non-zero divisor in A. Right? But if I write this down, then, you know, this, you know, there's a little, I have to, at some point I have to pay for this E minus D. And I can pay for it by saying this map here, multiplication by F, is homogeneous of degree D. Or I can pay for it by saying, well, this guy's really A with its degree shifted. Right? And so I'm explaining something that's going to come up, late, come up later. Right? Uh, so, uh, let, let me repeat. This multiplication from A to A there is, of course, taking a polynomial of degree in E minus D and mapping it to a polynomial of degree E. And so, this map is naturally homogeneous of degree D. Right? So, one of the things I'm going to be doing when I talk about general modules is, right, let's just shift the degrees here and define a new module, which is a, a, a minus d, which is a, but, you know, I just lie about the degree. Whenever I get to a degree, I, uh, I just say, instead of saying degree e, I say degree e minus d. Right? And then if I do that, this map is homogeneous to degree 1. And that's, uh, that's what's, what we're going to do throughout. Okay? Okay, so, so I'll, I'll be doing, now, now I'm going to be doing modules. So, so let, let me make the point again here. So, you know, we're doing geometry, and so, you know, ge geometer, I've got this hypersurface de defined by one equation in degree n. I want to say what its dimension is, and I want to say what its degree are. So, you know, you, you would hope that these are geometric notions. 
What does it mean, say, that the variety is dimension n minus 1? Well, you know, it means, for example, that I can fix n minus 1 coordinates freely, and then there are finitely many solutions. That should mean something. Right? And then what does its degree mean? Well, we've seen lots of times. Degree means the number of times it meets a general line or something like that. But the thing we're seeing here is that uh, we have this uh, Hilbert series. And the Hilbert series is sort of a, an algebraic object. I'm treating this here by using you know, very simple combinatorial manipulations, but I'm treating it just purely by saying uh, you know, ring, module, graded, principal ideal, words from algebra. So all of this is just, all of this is algebra. And what we're getting out is, for very cheaply, for very little effort, we're getting out very precise statements about what the dimension of x is and what the degree of x is. So uh, I, I'm not going to have, I'm not necessarily going to have time to go into this uh, in detail later, but, um, uh, you know, if, so exercise for you to think about, exercise if uh, f d1 f g d2 oh. <coughs> homogeneous yeah, let, let, let's say irreducible homogeneous forms of degree uh, d1 no common components <coughs> no, no common factors right and then I, I if I define X inside PN to be given by F equals G equals 0 then the Hilbert series P x of t is 1 minus t to the d1, 1 minus t to the d2, divided by 1 minus t to the n plus 1. And this is 1 plus t plus t squared, t to the d, d1 minus 1. Right, and I'm going to use this to say that then x has dimension n minus 2 and degree at d1 times d2. Right, and so, uh, you know, this is, this, is an, this is an exercise. Think, you have to think about it. You have to think through all the arguments I said and uh, figure it out. And you also have to think about what the, what, you know, what's, what the, uh, what the final, final answer means. So, you know, there's, uh, there's t to the d, there's d, d1 terms here and d2 terms here. So when I take the product of them, I get d1 times d2 terms. And so I get this, uh, this degree, right? And so this is, uh, you know, a kind of very algebraic form of Buzz's theorem. I said right at the beginning of the course that uh, this uh, two, two plane curves, two plane curves of degree n and m intersect in n m points. So this is the same kind of uh, the same kind of argument. Okay, so uh, you know a is k of x not up to xn, as before. So I want, I want to say what is m finitely generated, graded, a module. 
So A module, A module means that M is uh, an additive group. And there's a multiplication map, A cross M into M, which is uh, distributive. Right, meaning that uh, A1 plus A2 M is A1M plus A2M, and the same with A times M1 plus M2. <coughs> and this is, you know, uh, this is, you know, for all A and M. So, you know, for example, the second one here says that um, for each fixed element A, the map I've got M to M is a homomorphism of groups. You know, the, this, one, this one says sort of something basically similar. I'm not going to, uh, uh, you know, if you're, if you're an algebraist, you want to say that this means that A, there's a homomorphism from A to the self maps from M to M, to the linear self maps from M to M. And that's what this first, uh, this first thing is saying. And, uh, you know, things, also things like A times B, M is A times B, M. <coughs> I mean, you, you, you know what I mean. <coughs> Associative. So, you know, this means that uh, this is something to do with A mapping, A mapping on M being uh, some, something like an a homomorphism of algebras from the, uh, from the multiplicative module, the mu multiplicative monoid of A into the homomorphisms of M. Anyway, anyway I mean, you all know this stuff. It's all, uh, it's just definitions. Right? So M is graded. Graded means that um, uh, M is the direct sum of M D, D in Z. So I allow, uh, I allow D negative. <coughs> right, and uh, when I do A times M into M, this preserves degrees. So, you know, if I have something of degree, um, I, I don't know. If I have something of degree, D here and something of degree E, then it goes to D plus it. Okay? So, let me give an example of this, example we've already seen, and a rather important example. So, example A twisted by E. This is the, is the module A with, the, with a different grading, with the grading A, E in degree D is A, D plus E. Right? So, uh, you know, for example, if I've got the polynomial ring 1x, x squared, x cubed and so on, then obviously as a polynomial ring, I want to think of the element 1 as having degree 0, the element x having degree 1, the element x squared having degree uh, 2. But I could take all those degrees and just shift them down or shift them up uh, uh, using this. Right? So in this terms, in these terms, the thing that I'm having here, or the thing that I'm having here, is this A twisted by minus D. Right? And this is just a device. In this argument, this was a very simple device just for keeping track, for doing accountancy uh, related to saying, I want, I want to say, I want to, I'm interested in what this, this ring is in some degree, so I have to ask the same degree here and the same degree here. So it's convenient for that to, you know, change the rules here. The only thing I'm doing is changing the rules so that this map is, by definition, of degree zero. Right. 
OK, and then finitely generated uh, means that uh, M is generated as A module by finitely many graded elements, homogeneous elements. Right, so I've got elements, for example, M1 in M, M. And uh, you know, each of these is homogeneous of some de degree. Uh, you know, I'd go a bit crazy if I have to introduce degree for each of them. Let, let me say, uh, you know, I don't know, K1 or something. Mi in each of these guys is such that the M is direct sum. A times MI. Uh, so, so, so you know this uh, this guy here is generated by a single element in degree uh, e or minus e. Right. So, so in, in degree in, in in this in this a of e in degree zero. I have, uh, okay, in degree minus e, I have the element 1 there, which is of degree 0. Okay, and then there's a, so, so, there's a little, a little, uh, I need a lemma from algebra, which is that, uh, finitely generated module over an Ethereum ring is an Ethereum. A finitely generated module M over an Ethereum ring is an Ethereum. In other words, I've got M, and I say if I've got any M primed submodule, Is again, is again finitely generated. So you'll see why I need this in the proof. But anyway, uh, you know, it's an exercise. Uh, find this in a. Find this in a textbook. Right, I'm not going to give the proof. It's uh, you know basically just two or three pages, one or two pages of algebra. Okay, so. Uh, uh, I I had an explicit warning that uh, I could expect students here to have done field extensions, but maybe not modules. So that's why I made a bit of a mess of introducing this last time. Okay. So now I want to say four uh, M define M uh, def uh, define uh, the Hilbert function by uh, of m by p n let, let me say p d of m equals dimension over k of m in degree d right so so if uh, if m is if m is finitely generated, then um, uh, each m d is finite finite dimensional over k. Right. That's just because each d, according to according to this, the the whole m is the sum of uh, this A times finitely many terms. So if I'm in any particular degree, I have to take elements of A of degree, uh, you know, minus these, minus these Ki's. So this degree minus these Ki's, and the, the, the ring itself is finitely, finitely generated in every, finite dimensional in every degree. Right? And so, so each of these is a finite number. And also notice that uh, MD is zero if uh, D is very negative. 
right? Because uh, uh, <coughs> you know, there's a finite number of these KIs. If I'm uh, if I'm before the creation of any KIs, then uh, <coughs> if this d here is less than minus the dimension of each of these KIs, the, the degree of each of these KIs, then uh, MD is zero. Okay, and then the Hilbert, ser Hilbert series. So this is a func this is a, a, a function of D. This is D, D maps to this dimension. So it's a numerical function. It takes integers into integers. The Hilbert series is the same thing, sum of uh, P, D, of M, T to the D. And this is summed now over D in Z. Right? So, so this is allowed to go down into the uh, finitely many negative degrees. So this is now Laurent, uh, Laurent power series. Right? So there's a Hilbert function, there's a Hilbert series, and later on there'll be a Hilbert polynomial. So there's a sort of key, there's an inductive step. So suppose that uh, suppose that M uh, as above as ab above in this case meaning over there to the right M as above and let's take x n one of the one of the variables in x in k of x not up to x n. This is homogeneous. This is A. Right? So I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with the last one, but I could deal with any of the others would be exactly the same. Right? Then I can do multiplication by M. I can do multiplication by XN there. Right? And according to my... I want, I want to put minus one there. Right? This is just cosmetic. This is just uh, in order for that to be homogeneous to degree one. Okay, so what am I interested in? So there's a co-kernel here. So let me write. Uh, let me just let me just write C for the co-kernel. And maybe there's a kernel here. Kernel. So I I, I want to know how much of D there is in some degree. So let me say in some degree k, right? And then here I have multiplication by xn and the same thing here in degree k minus 1. Right? So, you know, these two guys here are finite, finite dimensional vector spaces over the field, which unfortunately is also called k. Okay, let me... Let me uh, L minus one. <coughs> so when you have a, a finite dimensional map between finite, uh, so this is a linear map between finite dimensional vector spaces. So it's, some got, it's got some kernel, which is called K in degree L minus one, and it's got some co-kernel. Right? And well, we don't we don't really know what these are. These could be anything. Right? But the thing we do know is that um, uh, altern the alternating sum of dimensions is zero. Right, and so this means that uh, uh, this means that if I if I write down dimension of ML minus the dimension of 
n L minus 1, this is equal to uh, the dimension of C L minus the dimension of K L minus 1. Think nullity theorem. <coughs> So, so this C is, of course, just M divided by X times N. And the kernel is just a set of guys that get multiplied by zero in, in X. <coughs> so the rank nullity theorem says that uh, uh, the rank of this map, the, the, the dimension of this thing is the rank of this map plus the dimension of the co-kernel. Right? And uh, again, I ask for the rank of uh, what's the dimension of this. The dimension of this is the rank of this map plus the dimension of the kernel. Uh, so I hope I've got it. I hope it, I've got it right. Uh, this dimension here is this dimension plus this dimension minus this dimension. Right? But this thing here, this thing here, if I if I sum, if I sum over L, this left-hand side is 1 minus T times P of M, PM of T. Right? So if I'm doing, uh, if I'm doing sum over, over L dimension ML, T to the L, and then minus sum over L dimension of M, L minus 1, T to the L minus 1. And this is summed over all in L in Z now. Right? Then, you know, I, I can just, I can just, uh, um, I'm sorry, this is T to the L. Right? I can just, uh, I can just change this. I can, I, I can just, this L here is a dummy, right? This is, uh, this could be any letter. It doesn't, it, it, it's not the same L as that. It's a dummy variable. It can be anything. And so it doesn't make any difference if I change this to ML T to the L plus 1. Right? If I do that, then these terms are the same, and this is just 1 minus T times T to the L. Right, so if I knew that the, if I knew something about the right hand side, then I know the left hand side. So, so you know, this is an argument by dimension, and somewhere w when you get down to L very negative, the dimension is zero. So the, the uh, induction does start from somewhere. This is uh, you know, there's a kind of constant of integration in this iteration, and uh, it's out there at the back, uh, out there in the very negative numbers where everything is zero. Right. But uh, on the right hand side, uh, C, L, C, and M, C and K are modules, are A modules. They're finitely generated and graded. Right, so this was a map. The ma Xn here is a, is a, a, hom a, a homomorphism of A modules from M to M. And so its kernel and its co-kernel are still finitely generated graded A modules. I, to I told you why it's finitely generated over there. Right? So what's the punchline? What's the, what's the end of the story? So the, uh, the, point, the point of this story is that uh, these are A modules and they're killed by Xn. Right? So this guy here is, uh, it consists of all the elements in M that are killed by Xn. Right? And so it's an A module, but actually it's an A module in which this guy Xn operates by zero, acts by zero. And then this co-kernel, exactly the same. Right? This kernel it consists of the elements of M modulo the multiples of Xn. 
So if I take anything in here, it's an element of m modulo multiples of xn. If I multiply it by xn and consider it again modulo multiples of xn, then it's zero by construction. Right? So, you know, this is an algebraic proof. This is, a proof uh, this is a proof in the style of abstract algebra. We don't care what these m's and so on are, but we have a proof by induction here. Deg uh, the, if I do CL, if I do dimension of CL, T to the L, and dimension of uh, whatever it is, so KL, so KL minus 1 T to the L, right? These are Hilbert functions of... Uh, C of T and Hilbert functions of K of T and these C and K are modules over K X0, X1, Xn minus 1. Right? So by induction on N I know that uh, their Hilbert series, PC of T, PM of T, are poly of the form poly uh, Hil uh, Laurent polynomial divided by 1 minus T to the N. Right? And that proves the theorem. Proves the uh, it proves the result. Right. So uh, uh, in case in case it's not stated, I stated it earlier, but it's rubbed out since then. So the theorem I've just proved is this uh, P M of T. So this is definition by de by definition. This is the dimension. P, uh, the dimension of m in degree um, some l p to the l and then summed over l. Right, this is uh, uh, a Laurent polynomial divided by 1 minus t to the power of n plus 1. <clears throat> okay, so uh, you know the uh, look. The, the thing I want to emphasise is this theorem is really the proof of this theorem was really very trivial. Right? I just have to say, uh, you know, I'm counting numbers of monomials. So when I count monomials, I can count those divisible by x n, uh, and then I can count the guys that get killed by x n, and it's just you know some kind of addition. And then I use this. Uh, Alternating sum of dimensions of vector spaces in an exact sequence is zero. That's also completely, you know, this is first year, first year linear algebra, the rank nullity theorem. <coughs> so, um, you know, uh, and then I just use this combinatorial trick because because this is a sum, because this is a sum of terms, because this is a generating series, it's a sum of all these combinatorial terms. Uh, uh, with marked by these monomial coefficients t to the l, taking the dimension of this taking the dimension of this guy minus the dimension of this guy is just multiplying this generating series by one minus t. Right, and then I get down to smaller degree. So, so you know, the, it, this is a substantial result, but the proof of it is very trivial. <coughs> okay, so the uh, the corollary of this. Corollary is that um, uh, the Hilbert polynomial. If I look, the, if I take this dimension of m l t to the l. So, sorry, I take now the dimension of m l. So this is uh, p m of l is a polynomial in 
L for L. So, uh, so let's uh, let me let me explain what this is. So, uh, so, so let me write numerate. Let me write n of t for the numerator. Right, and so uh, so the whole thing, p m of t, is uh, n of t divided by uh, one minus t to the n plus one. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, so definition, uh, definition, this is the, the Hilbert polynomial. Okay, so, so uh, I, I, you know, the, I'm, this is just definition, just the words. This is the Hilbert function, I have this function d, maps to this number. I can do, I'm doing this for all d, possibly including negative numbers, possibly, uh, and so on. Then there's a Hilbert series when I wrap them all up together into a generating function. So this is sort of for convenience. This is just in order to be able to apply that trick over there. And then this is the Hilbert polynomial. So, um, <coughs> so we'll see in examples that, uh, you know, this is, this is completely this is nonsense when L is small. We've already seen examples where it's not true. Okay, so, uh, so let me, you know, let me write A. Um, I need letters, some letters. Um, N naught T to the N naught plus. Look, for God's sake. Um, a t to the b, <coughs> and then it's uh, plus and so on. So lots of terms like this. So, so you know, this might start with t to the minus 3, and it might go on to t to the 7th, and this is de decorated by some coefficients. These are always in integers. Right? So the, the, the statement I'm making here is that this thing here is of the, this is a numerical, this is a, a, polyno a Laurent polynomial in T with coefficients in Z. The statement, I, the theorem I proved here is that this is a polynomial with integral coefficients divided by 1 minus T to N plus 1. Right? And now I'm saying this numerator here is a, polyno is a Laurent polynomial, so it's a sum of terms like this. So if I do A T to the B, this is going to give a uh, a n plus d uh, n plus uh, k plus b choose n contributes in p n of t in p m of t. Right. So. Uh, if uh, if this L if L is greater than uh, the deg the degree the the, gr the the is greater than or equal to the biggest degree occurring uh, big biggest exponent uh, okay is greater than the highest. Exponent in n, then r, then p of t in this degree l is a sum of these terms there, right? And these are these are all these are these are all polynomials.
So let me just let me just go, let me just give the example again because uh, it's uh, useful to see that this is not this is uh, you know one of these results with a a condition in it and the con if the condition is not hold, doesn't hold then it's not true right so uh, uh, if I do this uh, p x of t is one minus t to the d divided by one minus t to the uh, n plus one. Right. So this is uh, 1 plus t plus t squared plus t to the d minus 1 divided by 1 minus t to the n. So what's the coefficient of So I'm, uh, the I'm asking, what is the coefficient of t to the power of e in this? Let, let's say t to the power of l in this. <coughs> so I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this t. This, uh, this, this, this term here, the, 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 the denominator, gives uh, sum uh, 1, this sum now, this is n, not n plus 1. This gives sum n plus d minus 1, choose n minus 1, t to the d. <coughs> For d greater than 0, and it gives 0 for d less than or equal to 0. So then I have to, uh, I have to take, so, so, so this thing is a certain power series, and then I have to take this ser power series and multiply it out by this 1 plus t plus. And so this coefficient is, It's equal to sum of these n plus d minus 1, n minus 1, except now I have to do minus, minus i times t. So it's this, summed over i in 0 up to d minus 1. OK, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you're... I'm not sure if what, maybe a, a concrete example would be better. Right. <coughs> so, the, the, if I take the numerator, if I take just this denominator part, if I just take this 1 over 1 minus t to the n, right, then I get this power series, power series with this coefficient. So, in degree d, he has this as coefficient. If I'm now going to multiply him by this, then I'll ask what, I take the product, and what, what does he have in degree d? So he has this term in degree d coming from here, and then I have to decrease d by 1 to get the term coming from here, and de decrease by 2 to get the term coming from there. So I get, so I get this thing, right? And so this is, uh, this is certainly a polynomial in, in d. That's a polynomial in d, d, degree d because it's an integral polynomial in d. Pol polynomial in d with integral coefficients. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry. I'm, uh, this is, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, this is just crazy. I'm, uh, So this is a sum of d terms, each of which is one of these things, but uh, taken for different, uh, d different values of L. Let, let, let's, do a, let's do a concrete case. Let, let's do, um, so let's have C is, let's, uh, let's have, for example, uh, C4 in P2.
right? So then, so he's got he's got this function p c of t, right? And uh, so I, I'm going to tell you what the coefficients are. So in degree one, in, deg in degree zero, I see the constants. In degree two. In, uh, sorry, in degree one, I see the three linear forms. So there's an x, y, z here. This is f of x, y, z equals zero. Right, one plus three, t. Then in degree two, all the quadrics, I have all the con conics in the plane here. So there are six conics in the plane, minus all of those that vanish on this quartic curve. So minus nothing, right? So then I get 6t squared here, right? In degree, in degree 3, I have 9t cubed, right? Uh, yeah, sorry, I have 10t cubed. I have the cubics in the plane, except minus those vanishing on c4. And then finally, in degree, in degree 4, I have not 15, but 14t to the fourth. Right? And then in degree, the next degree up, degree 5, quintics in the plane, so I can do this in my head, 21. There's 21 guys here. However, if I take this f and I multiply them by x or by y or by z, I get 0. So I only get 18 here. 18t to the fifth. And then it's going to go 21t to the sixth plus 24t to the seventh. Uh, sorry. I'm going too fast. 22, 26, t to the seventh, and plus and so on. So we know these numbers. We've seen, you know, three linear forms in the plane, six quadratic, quadratic forms in the plane, ten cubic forms in the plane, uh, fifteen quartics in the plane, but I'm only seeing four of them. However, the real regularity is not down here where we can understand things. It's up here when, when I get these higher degrees. So what am I seeing? I'm seeing 14, 18, 22, 26. You know, if I ask you to predict the next number in the series, it's not very hard. These are just growing by 4. Right? So the, uh, so the, the point I'm making here is that these numbers here, these numbers are of the form... Uh, some constant d times degree times l plus a constant, right? And uh, the degree is 4, l, 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 l is the exponent here, right? And the constant is uh, uh, minus 2 for l greater than. So it start, where does it start? It starts there for L greater than or equal to 2, I think. Yeah? So actually, this is a particular case of Riemann Rock. This is 1 minus g plus, uh, plus 4 times, plus 4 times L. g is 3. <coughs> right. So, well, you know, I'm, uh, it's easy for me to do this because I've done this kind of calculation 100 times. So notice that this number here, this number 4L minus 2, this number 4L minus 2 holds here, but it's not true here, and it's certainly not true there. And it's not true for any negative numbers either. <coughs> and so the same, thing, the same thing's always going to happen. So this Hilbert, uh, this, uh, this Hilbert polynomial tells you the behavior of the PM of L when L has passed some bound, when L has gone beyond the ge all the degrees of the generators here. Before then, it uh, doesn't work. Yeah, so, sorry. I'm okay. Uh, you know, in some ways, uh, instead of listening to me doing this, you should do some exercises. I should get, get together some exercises. So you learn, you learn to do mathematics by doing it, not by watching somebody else do it. Uh, 
Okay, any questions, any problems with this?